Dear Run Parents, welcome back to the Dear Run Parents podcast, Refocus. Now, I know it took a little while for this episode to come out, and actually our interview happened in March, um, so you notice my hair will be a little different, but um, nonetheless, this conversation was just so rich, and our guest today is Darlene Martins. Darlene is a mom, a wife, um, she is also a, I want to get this right, um, a clinical social worker and therapist and also an author. Her and her husband Jake have been attending Dear Run Church for a little while now and she's actually on our Remix team, our children's ministry advisory team. So I've been blessed to get to know her this last year that she's been on our team. Um, today Darlene and I, um, you will see that we were chatting about, um, in a sense, self-care seeing where there's areas in our life that may be lacking a little bit and what we can do to help those areas out. Um, in the link below, in, or sorry, in the description below, there will be a link to, um, this is called, it says assessing your life balance. And there's different categories on this wheel. There are spiritual, physical, financial, intellectual, emotional, and social. And so those are the different areas that we'll be talking about today. So if you want to, you can already download this and do the exercise before our conversation, or you can do it after, totally up to you. But it's really um, opened my eyes even to where I'm at as well. Um, so I really hope this conversation blesses you like it did me. So without further ado, let's take it away. All right, well, welcome Darlene. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so glad that you are here. Um, could you tell us, um, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, um, just so they can get to know you a little bit, what you're about, hobbies, family, anything you want to share? Sure. Okay. So um, I'm married to Jake, and we've been married for 43 years. We have three uh, grown daughters, six grandchildren three that live in Leamington mm -hmm. and uh, three that live in Alberta. And so sometimes our travels a couple times a year, a couple of times a year have taken us to Alberta. Um, but of course with COVID, we haven't been able to, to get out there to see those little pumpkins, but soon we're counting on soon. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> so my hobbies, uh, I love to write um, and I love to bake and when I realized in this last year I was probably eating too much, mm -hmm. I started to bake and give it away. And nice. of course, <laughs> grandchildren here have loved to get the baking. And um, I, I love to crochet. I find that's my area of relaxation. Um, so I make these, these wonderful dish rags. Nice. And I also make chemo caps for, um, oh. for women who um, lose their hair because of cancer. Yeah. That's really and pretty. I don't charge for these. And yep. you know, anybody that would like a, a chemo cap, just let me know. Yeah. And of course, a lot of prayer goes into those caps as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and of course, my faith is in Jesus Christ. Um, he has walked hand in hand with me through a lot of ups and downs in life. In life, mm -hmm. and I firmly believe that even at this moment, He's just got His arms of love wrapped around me. So. I love that. And um, if you haven't already, you should read Darlene's book, those who are listening. Um, it takes you through her journey a bit with Jesus. And not, I shouldn't say a bit. It takes her through, takes you through her journey with Jesus. It, is, it blessed me a lot. I finished it in a week, and I'm not a reader, <laughs> to be honest. It takes me long to finish it. So, yes, if you haven't done that, you should read it. Um, also, I was a recipient of one of your dish cloths that you made. And my daughter actually took one out of my gift and she's using it as a blanket for her stuffies because she liked it oh, so much. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I forgot to tell you that. So, <laughs> yep, yeah, it's in her, her stuffy blanket bin that she has. So, okay. and she has a lot of stuffies, so she needs a lot of blankets. <laughs> that right. was her reasoning. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's she's sweet. funny. Okay. <laughs> Um, so what sparked this passion for you to pursue a career in social work? Well, I think from as far back as I can remember, um, I've always had a passion for people. Mm -hmm. 
and my earliest memory of feeling I needed to do something to help somebody was when I was 15 years old and I was walking home from school. Now you have to appreciate, I grew up downtown Windsor in a very rough neighborhood. And so I'm walking home from school and there's this little girl walking along. Um, she's about two years old. It was a cool day and all she had on was a thin white dress and she was screaming for her mom. And just as I went over to wow. come to her aid, her mom came over and grabbed her and off they went. But I was so moved by that, thinking, how can I, how can I help people? Mm -hmm. And um, so social work is actually a second career for me. I actually started okay. my, my work years as a legal secretary. Mm -hmm. And while I worked and raised a family and was, had a farm as well, mm -hmm. um, I took courses and I took one course at a time till I finished my university degree. And so social work became a second career for me, but I've been doing it for almost 25 years already. Amazing. Oh, wow. Congrats. And, <laughs> thank you. And so um, I think then what happened when I was doing my studying, um, doing a spiritual gifts um, course mm -hmm. and had the realization that my top gift was mercy. And mm. it was like the Lord just affirmed in me that, yep, this is what I want you to do. And so one of my passions to go along with that is to just find ways to um, lead hurting people to the healer, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. So very cool. Love to do Christian counseling. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm sure you were such a gift to those people for sure. Um, so today we want to talk a little bit about um, self-care while being a parent. And I think self-care has become a bit of a buzzword <laughs> in these last couple of years. And I just automatically think about taking a bath or putting a spa facial treatment on, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but um, as we were brainstorming for this podcast, um, you mentioned different parts of our life that need care, not just the relaxing part. Um, so, but before we get into what those different parts are and what it looks like, um, could you just... Um, kind of explain to us how do we know when one part of our life is not being taken care of like what are some of the um what are some of the indicators that we could look out for to know that we are kind of lacking in an area okay um i think having a hot bath and giving yourself a facial is a wonderful thing to do mm -hmm. <laughs> and i want to encourage everybody to do that yeah um, but, but I think, you know, even before COVID, and I know mm -hmm. today we're going to be talking about now, yeah. mm -hmm. after, before COVID. For sure. uh, even before COVID, I think families have been under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that pressure we put on ourselves as well. But, you know, it's always, I have to have the clean house. I have to have the yard perfect. My children have to be well behaved. I, I need to make sure I look nice and I look good. And I have to have the right answers. And yeah. And um, all of these things that that we put pressure on ourselves, and then it's well now I have to have the Pinterest birthday party and post <laughs> those pictures so everybody in social media gets yep. to see that. Right? Um, and so all of those things are wonderful, and I think the Lord has given us all of these things to wonderfully enjoy. But where it becomes a problem is when we stop enjoying it, when we mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. um, realizing that this is actually bringing me some some joy and some happiness and when yep. we start to feel it these things have become a bit of a burden mm -hmm. and so i think we're always been kind of struggling with that that balance anyway yeah but then along comes covid <laughs> and, <Yeah>. and now <laughs> on top of all of that um we have parents who maybe aren't working Maybe yeah. we have parents who are working, but now grandparents come, can't come over to help. Mm -hmm. And on top of the responsibilities of being uh, chief bottle washer, uh, cook, wife, mother, housekeeper, everything else, husband, mm -hmm. um, we're now expected, or young parents are being expected to be um, nurses and doctors because they can't get appointments. They're okay. expected to be teachers. Um, mm -hmm. And they're being pulled and stretched in all kinds of areas that that they aren't uh, prepared for, yeah. aren't trained in. 
And that can start to feel very uncomfortable when we begin to get stretched and then when we feel inadequate. Mm -hmm. You know, let's face it, not all teachers or not all people are teachers for a reason. Yep. Not all people are <laughs> nurses for a reason. I would I could never be a nurse, you know. Oh, I, me neither, in no way. People. <laughs> I could never do that, right? Um, but along with that parents expected to help children with their schoolwork and to, you know, even if it's online, there's just the supervision and all of that that goes mm -hmm. with it. I can just hear children getting frustrated too and mm -hmm. yelling at mom and dad with, how do you know? You're not yep. my teacher, right? Yep. Because <laughs> you're my mom and you're my dad. You're not my teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so again, that creates more and more of a sense of inadequacy. Uh, for people, that sense of, I'm, I'm not prepared for this. Um, yep. All of this can lead a person to a lack of energy and a lack of motivation. Um, maybe even to the point where they might feel a little bit down, a little bit depressed. Mm -hmm. Because the next day, that whole vicious cycle starts over again. Right. So, so we go from too much to do, feeling stretched, feeling inadequate, feeling unappreciated, no sense of satisfaction, to feeling tired, exhausted, impatient, mm -hmm. critical, negative attitude, with a lack of empathy and a lack of motivation. So we, we kind of go down that, that long progression of right. this doesn't feel good. And so I think we need to do one of two things. We need to catch catch those things before we get down to that bottom point mm -hmm. um, and and make changes as we go. Or if we're already down there where we're, we're just done, then how yep. do we recapture things that are important to us in life and, and rebuild who we are as people, as individuals, so that we can go back up to that place where we want to be? For sure. Um, yeah, as you were talking and talking about the going down, I, I found myself in that place before COVID when I had my, um, when my daughter, when I had my daughter, our first baby, and uh, it's all wonderful at first and everything, but then, like you said, you get caught up in the day-to-day, -day, the diapering, the feeding, the napping, and then it just keeps on going over and over again, and I realized, like, do I even know who I am? And it's such a big change, too, right? So becoming from not being a mother to being a mother and that whole identity as well changing but yeah i definitely felt myself going down <laughs> that in that place and then in covid too um tegan being home from school and having to be a school mom malcolm being sick and i'm not allowed to bring him into the doctor's office to see if he has an earache or tonsillitis like i just wasn't able to go so yeah i totally feel that for parents as well yeah yeah absolutely so, um, so when we were brainstorming, like I said, um, you mentioned that there's these two triangles and you were telling me about these different triangles and how um, that each part of this, these triangles we need to take care of. And mm -hmm. you said you didn't really like the word balance, but <laughs> we want to try and make sure that these triangles are balanced. So right. could you um, explain that a little bit to our listeners here? Sure. And, and before I do, I, I just yeah. thought... I'd like to just respond to something you just mm. said about, um, you know, feeling that these these children were taking everything, right? Mm. You were, they were getting all of your attention, and rightfully so. They're they're yes. little, they yep. need so much of mom's um, input and help and, and everything, and dad too. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that we've also been taught that we're supposed to put everybody else first. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, I had to think of a song that I learned when I was a little girl in Sunday school. I don't remember how it goes. I just remember the words were J-O-Y, J-O-Y, Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. Mm -hmm. And it was a formula for how to make a happy life, how to right. make a joyful life, right? Yeah. But one time we were on a plane going to Alberta. And I was really struck by something the stewardess said. She was talking about the airplane, if it depressurizes, the oxygen masks will mm -hmm. fall. And then she said this. She said, 
put the mask on yourself first and then you can help others. Mm -hmm. That has always really struck me that if we're not breathing, if we're not taking care of ourselves, yeah. then we really can't help other people. So true. Or be as adequate as we need to be. So it becomes more and more important to, to do that self-care. Mm -hmm. Even scripture tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Right. right? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I want to give you and everybody else permission yeah. to, to take some time to focus on yourself. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay to do that. So what I've done here is mm -hmm. I've drawn a triangle and no hidden messages between the triangles, just a triangle. Mm -hmm. And it just says you. And so we're going to suggest that this triangle is just going to represent who we are and the different points of the triangle. We're going to talk about um, those things that um, that are different aspects as to who we are as people. Okay. So the first one is um, our physical. Well, I have to hold it here. Our physical and sexual selves. Mm -hmm. Scripture tells us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we want to glorify God in our body. It's therefore important to take care of those bodies, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're uh, eating right, that we're exercising, yep. and that we're sleeping well. And when I say exercise, I'm not talking about, you know, you have to run out and join a gym and lift weights and use all mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> talking about going for a 20 minute walk yep. and we know that a 20 minute walk increases enough dopamine in our system that can actually help elevate mood and decrease stress mm. and so it becomes very important that we get that exercise exercise can also help us sleep better at night and when we sleep better we're going to be able to cope better the next day yes. not be so impatient <laughs> <laughs> And it becomes so uh, almost simple because we know this, mm -hmm. but we forget about it, especially when we start feeling like, oh, I don't even need to fix my hair today or get dressed because I'm locked in, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, so we want to make sure that we take care of our bodies, um, including our eyes um, mm. and our teeth, um, washing our hair, taking care of, we just feel better when we, when we fix ourselves up a little yeah. bit. Um, going along with that, I think these are things that we can also teach our children. And by us mm -hmm. naturally doing it, our children will pick up on that as well. Mm -hmm. And when we say, well, I can't eat right because we're kind of stuck at home and we're eating more baked cookies and that kind of thing. But if we cut up an apple for snack and everybody has an apple, mm -hmm. that helps ourselves as well. Right? For sure. Um, so we want to make sure that we get those walks or that exercise in. If you're going to go for a walk and you have little children, uh, as long as it's safe for them, let them walk ahead of you. So you leg back a bit. You're also now incorporating into your day not just the exercise, but a bit of downtime for yourself, which I mm -hmm. think is really important as well. If you're still working and you're one of those essential workers, um, you can do simple things like taking the stairs instead of an elevator parking your car farther away from the office and walking in, mm -hmm. uh, maybe walking to work, if depending on where you're working. Um, if you're finding you're at home with the children and they're um, at not at school, but they're in the home, we have another lockdown, don't be afraid to um, go out during their recess time and play with them, kick the ball around with them, Jump on the trampoline if you want. <laughs> Whatever you have available to help yourself be able to do that. Yeah. And I think going along with physical, we also want to make sure that we also take time to rest. Mm -hmm. You know, God set that example for us when he worked for six days and rested on the, on the seventh. For to sure. have some downtime in our week and even some downtime during the day. One of the things I love to do with my grandchildren is when I get tired and I know I just need to have that 15 minute pick me up, mm -hmm. um, I'll tell them, okay, you have to sit on that chair. You may not sleep. You have to make sure I sleep. You have to watch me. Oh, that's funny. 
<laughs> and and they will often sit there. I'll peek at them, and they're sitting there just staring at me. And before <laughs> before I know it, they they fall asleep too. You know. But, That's really cute. Um, they're I trying try to that. Stare at me, right? <laughs> um, so another aspect to that physical self mm -hmm. is our sexual selves. Um, and this is true whether we're married or single or currently not in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And learning about our sexual self starts when we're young and it continues to grow and we continue to learn about that. You know, scriptures teach us that it is the will of God that you abstain from sexual immorality. And that's from First Thessalonians. And I think in that regard, no matter what the age, whether we're already married or single or on our own, raising children or mm -hmm. even having teens in the house, I think it's important that we learn um, how to prevent our eyes and our mind from seeing things that we don't want to see, mm -hmm. we don't want to hear. And so being careful what we see and watch on TV, what's on our phones, um, mm -hmm. what's even popping up on our computer, and, yep. and to really guard ourselves and protect ourselves from that. And although our desire is to be intimate with our spouse, um, sometimes that exhaustion and that lack of motivation mm -hmm. can um, also affect what happens in the bedroom. Yep. Or if we have teens or children underfoot, uh, yep. especially if they're home more because of COVID, um, <laughs> you know, um, privacy can also now be a problem as well. Mm -hmm. But whether it's exhaustion or private time together, I think we also need to remember 1 Corinthians 7, 5, that we don't deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent for a time. And so sometimes it's okay to wait. Mm -hmm. And other times we want to find some creative ways in order to um, have that intimate time together. I say some of this cautiously because we also know that sometimes physical concerns or even um, maybe some negative childhood experiences mm -hmm. uh, can affect as well what happens in the bedroom. And we want to be sensitive to that. We want to uh, speak to our spouse about that and if need be even seek out some counseling. Let's remember that sexual intimacy is a form of communication. We need For to sure. talk to our spouse. We need to let him or her know this is what um, what's going on. This is um, what, how things affect me. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to make sure that they um, are important to us, that we um, hold their sense of worth at high regard as mm -hmm. well as our own. So talking to our partner and finding those creative ways, I think are both really important as well when it comes For to sure. intimacy. Yeah. No, that's great. I, I'm glad that you mentioned that um, physical health, you don't always have to just go and get into a gym <laughs> right away because I tend to overthink it that if I'm going to make a commitment to physical health, then I need to do so many things during the week or but it could be as simple as just going for a walk, like you said, 20 minutes, that's all you need. So um, uh, as Darlene was talking, um, I have actually, I made myself, I did a little quiz, it's called a wellness wheel, and it has every triangle on there. So it has some questions, seeing how you did, and the, and the, the orange is physical, so you can see that I'm a little bit lacking. <laughs> in that area <laughs> and I think it is from my overthinking of um how to take care of myself physically but yeah that's one of the notes I made there so thanks for pointing that out oh thanks for sharing that <laughs> yeah no problem okay so what I did as well is Annie's triangle for physical was uh, orange yep and um, the next one on her wheel with her triangles mm -hmm. is financial, and that's yellow. And so I've also marked this one in yellow here. Nice. Um, you know, I think it's important that we recognize a few main principles about financial health. 
Um, so it's asking ourselves, you know, do we share as a couple the same um, financial uh, beliefs or principles uh, regarding tithing and saving and spending? Mm -hmm. um, because those are often some of the same areas that can cause conflict. Uh, Definitely. Be between yep. people. <laughs> and, and if you don't um, know what you're partner is thinking talk to him or her you know find out well what is it that that we believe about this so that we can be on the same page the other thing that I think is important that a lot of people may kind of cringe at is do you have a budget you know, mm -hmm. do you know how much money you have coming in and do you know how much money you can spend um, and let's see Proverbs 21 5 reads uh, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. And so we want to make sure that we we have that understanding as to what and how we can spend our money. Mm -hmm. And also, let's remember Joseph. Let's remember how Joseph um, managed to run a big country like yeah. Egypt and put mm -hmm. away one-seventh of, of the grain every year so that there was something available seven years down the road when there was issues of poverty and, and mm -hmm. famine. Um, and unfortunately, though, I think that even though many of us have saved, um, with the changes that happened in our society because of COVID, a mm -hmm. lot of people have lost their jobs or been laid off or um, have faced different financial pressures and a lot of those savings have ended up being depleted. I know families that, that dipped into their RSPs and have spent mm -hmm. what they had saved there as well as what they saved in their bank account. And so everybody's faced with a little bit of a different financial pressure. And it's a matter of going back to say, you know, how can we, if we can, recapture any of this? Or where are we at now? Um, it might be a matter of asking credit card companies to cut the interest for you or to mm -hmm. um, forgive the interest or getting some financial counseling um, or looking on Google to find out all of the myriad of ideas of how we can economize so we're not spending as much. Mm -hmm. But I think at this point in time, it's really important for, for you, all of us, to have permission to ask for help if we need it. Mm -hmm. You know, if if things have gotten so tight that you need help with groceries or you need help with a hydro bill or whatever it has to be to speak up. There's so many families in this boat. It's not a shame. It's no. a matter of saying, I, mm -hmm. I just I just can't do it. I can't continue to pull this all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our church actually has a wonderful ministry called the Care Ministry. And um, they are more than willing to help out where needed, for sure, if anyone who is listening. Um, yeah, for a little tip for us that worked well, that we didn't even realize when we remortgaged our house uh, last time, we got our bank to put away $30 every Monday, and it would go into our mortgage. It was set aside, and I think a lot of mortgages have this. Um, forgive me, I don't know exact the exact name. But um, that $30 over the year that we've accumulated actually paid for three months of our mortgage during when, when Herman was laid off. And then I was still working, but I was working at home, but Herman was laid off during that time. And it was such a help. And we, our bank just offered it to us and we're like, okay, yeah, like if something were to happen, but well, sure enough, COVID happened <laughs> and yeah. it was such a blessing. So yeah, see if 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 your bank can do that for you because wow, it, it really helped and blessed us during that time. Can you show us your wheel? Too? Oh yes, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. So that's so, green. This is our yellow here. Yep. I know. There was one that I wanted to work on. Let's see. Yes, we we actually need to meet with our financial advisor. So. <laughs> So that is on our my wheel to, to do in my goals. So, yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the other aspect of who we are um, is thoughts and intellect. 
we have to realize that we all have thoughts mm -hmm. and you know it's funny lots of times we don't even know where those thoughts come from or if you're like me my mind is just thinking all the time and I have trouble shutting it down <laughs> um, sometimes our thoughts are also very random mm -hmm. and at other times especially when we're in that low place where we feel um, uh, critical uh, with a lack of energy a lot of times those thoughts can um, get, can make us feel like they're very negative and then I think we need to do what we can to take those thoughts to the obedience of Jesus Christ mm. and that's taken out of 2nd Corinthians 10 verse 5 sometimes we also need to then work at changing our thoughts so that um, if we find that our thoughts are so negative and that we're putting ourselves down because mm -hmm. of them, like, oh, I, I, I can't possibly help my children with school. I'm just stupid. That's for teachers. How am I supposed to do that, right? Yeah. And if we constantly put ourselves down, then we eventually could lead to that place where we're going to feel depressed. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important that we change those negative thoughts that we might be having, especially about ourselves, to positive um, more truthful thoughts. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I think I find has helped with having positive thoughts is keeping a journal and keeping a journal uh, with uh, thank yous and um, keeping a journal that will outline positive things about our lives mm -hmm. um, so that our focus becomes more on the positive rather than on the negative and what's going wrong in our life and in our world. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, I also think from an intellect point of view, and we've grouped those together, thoughts yep. and intellect, that um, we find ways to develop our own interests and to con continue to grow our knowledge in certain areas, um, whether it's professional development or even when it comes to our own hobbies. And how can I be the best at my hobby or become um, kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of an expert in mm -hmm. my field as far as my hobby goes. And so it might mean um, doing more reading and doing that kind of thing in order to develop that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, the, the wheel that I had here, it did, it mainly focused on intellect and that's the purple here at the bottom. So yeah, what, let me just look at my notes here. Number 18. I pursue mentally and stimulating interests and hobbies. And that's one thing that I said that I am working on. I can find myself throwing myself into one lane that I don't pursue a hobby or I don't have time for that hobby. Um, I recently joined a book club that is worldwide. More, more so there's a lot more in the States than anywhere else. But um, so every week I get a book or every month I get a book and it's just reading for fun and I haven't done that in so long just to read for fun I just read for work or whatever um, but I've been so enjoying that and it's been just so refreshing for me to just read for fun and to to expand my interests that way too so that's one thing that's really been helped help me during this COVID time yeah neat mm -hmm. and, and again it's giving yourself permission to do that yes yes you know, exactly part about who you are Right. Yeah. 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 So what I've done now is I've created a second triangle mm -hmm. and I've inverted it and added it into the other triangle. So okay. we now become a star. <laughs> and and I have I have to think that it's okay to let our, our light shine, you know? For sure, yeah. So we're we're gonna be as corny as that sounds, we're gonna be bright stars. <laughs> So and in this triangle, we've now added our emotions and feelings. And um, the color code there matches Annie's. She's going to show us her mm -hmm. wheel as well. Yep, I have my red. There you go. <laughs> so just as we recognize in our children when they're sad or angry, I think it's important for us to recognize that in ourselves as well. For sure. to, to know what our emotions are um, and to address them. And I just want to mention that all emotions are fine. There isn't any emotion that God hasn't given to us for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even the emotion of anger is okay. It's okay to have the emotion of sadness or disappointment or mm -hmm. 
joy or happiness, whatever the emotion is, to tell yourself it's okay and it's okay to have it. Um, but scripture tells us very clearly that um, we want to make sure we do the right things with our emotion. And the example mm -hmm. I have is from Ephesians 4, verse 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And yeah. So in your anger, so anger is okay, but don't sin. So it's okay to mm -hmm. feel angry, but it's not okay to yell and scream and throw things and call people names and, and, and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And again, just using anger as that example. Yeah. Um, so when we have intense feelings, whatever they are, and maybe it's again on that grid where we're going down. Maybe it's those negative feelings or those feelings of feeling inadequate. Um, you know, it's to acknowledge them and then let's do something to address those feelings. So I find listening to music or going for a walk or mm -hmm. praying, um, you know, maybe you know, reminding myself of some scripture that is going to help. Yeah. Um, reminding myself who I am, that I've been fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. That God knows, he knows what I'm feeling, what I'm going through. Yeah. Um, and then also looking at what kinds of things can bring me hope for tomorrow so that these feelings don't become so out of control and so intense. Thanks. Um, also going along with that, sorry, just going to mention, I think yeah. let's not forget laughter. Mm -hmm. Laughter can be so healing in our lives. We can, um, you know, lay on the floor, giggle with our kids. We can maybe pull some funny pranks. And for myself, I know I have to laugh at myself often mm -hmm. um, because I do some Same. pretty crazy things. <laughs> so laughter becomes yeah. very healing as well. For sure. I know when <laughs> me and my husband, we were just talking about um the shows that we kind of like to watch on TV. And he's like, you have a type. And I'm like, what do you mean I have a type? He's like, you have the type of show that's light and funny and comedic. And I said, yeah, because I like to come away from that show feeling lighthearted. So <laughs> definitely, I, I have a type of show, I guess. <laughs> um, but the verse that really, um, that kind of stood out to me when I was looking at this triangle of our emotions um, is Psalm 147, verse 3, and it's, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And I just thought how, um, that was just such an intimate picture that I saw in my head of God loving us so much that He heals our broken hearts and He actually binds up our wounds. And just a reminder that if we are down, like, we don't have to stay there, and God is with us in that, too. Um, yeah, that just that picture just... I, it, it just stuck in my head, and I just love it. Neat. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And for my triangle, let me just pull up our thing here. Let's see. So the one part, the one question, it said, I perceive problems as opportunities for growth. <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, not every problem do I perceive it as growth. So that's somewhere that I need to work on a little bit. But it, I love these um, statements that they make because it makes you think a little bit of where where you're at. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at in the emotional part. Yeah. And and I I think yeah. most of us are like that. None of, none of us want problems. And oh no. I'd rather I'd rather not grow. You know, some days. Right? <laughs> yes, right. It's work. Um, our next color is green, and it is social and family. And I group these together because so many times I think our social time is spent with family, you know, at, at Christmas, uh, birthdays, uh, Easter. And for those who may have brothers and sisters nearby, you might be close in age to them. You may also be doing a lot of social activities with your own siblings. Mm -hmm. um, so putting those two together, I think for me became really important. And I think it's important that we always make sure that we have a couple of trusted friends that we can um, debrief with, download with, mm -hmm. uh, share our heart's desire with, um, where we're not going to feel judged. We know we're not going to be gossiped about, mm -hmm. but we're going to receive encouragement and truth in return. Mm -hmm. um, and where we know, too, that they'll call us and say, help, you know what? Yes. 
by melting down here and we mm -hmm. can we can give the same things back to them. I also think it's important that we um, surround ourselves with mo even multiple groups of people that we socialize with. So it's not just our, our siblings and our closest friends, um, but maybe it's the parents of the children our children go to school with. Yeah. Um, maybe it's people that we just always meet at the park and we go for a walk. Um, people that we work with or have common interests or hobbies with. Um, I still get together with my university friends and mm -hmm. my husband still gets together with his high school friends. Oh, that's cool. Um, before COVID, they were <laughs> yeah. getting together once a month for a coffee. And so it's learning over the years to just really continue to develop those social interactions and those friendships with each other. Mm -hmm. But we also want to make sure that those are wholesome times together. If mm -hmm. we find ourselves caught in situations where other people are down there as well, where they're talking negative and feeling unmotivated and everything, that we don't feed off each other. Mm -hmm. um, and if that, if we find that's happening, that maybe we take a bit of a break for a bit and surround ourselves with people who are, are going to be building us a little, up a little bit. And I'm okay. not saying but friendships or anything like that just just pulling away a bit until we become stronger ourselves mm -hmm. being with others is important and I think we forget that uh, especially when we feel so isolated sometimes yeah. I think the isolation makes us feel like oh I don't need other people when in fact we need them more than ever yes <laughs> and um I think sometimes, too, it's recognizing, especially maybe amongst our neighbors, you know, who might be alone mm -hmm. and, you know, who maybe I need to touch base with, even if it's, um, you know, a couple of cookies on, on a plastic mm -hmm. or paper plate and a little note so that they feel that they belong as well. Yep. You know, and I think that does something for us. When oh, we for sure. Things for other people. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Um, I was just looking at the verses I had here, so I was just going to pull one up. Hebrews 10, verses 24 and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. So even just having those people, that can spur us on and to, to keep um, those relationships that will bring out the good in each other. Yep, I like yeah. that. And my wheel, so that's the green over here. Yep. So the one part there um, uh, is number 26. It says, I'm able to resolve conflicts in all areas of my life. So I don't. I find myself, I don't like to say no a lot of the time. Um, but I am working on this, and I don't like conflict. Um, but I am working on how you can have conflict with your friends, with your, with your family, and not make it a wedge almost like a disagree or agree to disagree kind of thing, right? Instead of making it something in your life um, that will put a wedge in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think too, especially when it's hard with young children to get out and then depending yep. on where we're at in our world, mm -hmm. I, I think Zoom calls um, have become a little bit overdone sometimes. And yeah. yet also <laughs> What a blessing they are that we can yeah. connect with people like you and I are face to face. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, um, see that person, you know, smile or mm -hmm. connect eye to eye. Um, and let's not forget telephones, too. Yes. You know, talking on the phone with somebody. I recently, my grandson had called me and we're chatting away and all of a sudden his other grandmother's on the phone. I'm like, like, what in the world? Well, he had figured out how to do a conference call. <laughs> For all three of you. <laughs> and, and you're like, wow, you know, like we live in an amazing world that we have this technology available to us. Yeah. And so I think as much as we can that we use it to find ways to connect with other people, to keep That's that awesome. social, social uh, aspect of ourselves alive. Yep. For sure. Okay. So we have uh, one more aspect. Um, that we've included for today and we probably could even add all kinds of points to our triangle like psycho psychologically and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, but this one is spiritual 
Nice. And when and we think about spiritual, we're thinking about, you know, those aspects of life that bring meaning to life. You know, the author of, of Ecclesiastes, I had to think, you know, he he constantly says in there, you know, it's meaningless, it's meaningless, yep. everything is meaningless. <laughs> But then he clarifies himself in verse two or chapter two, verse twenty-five, when he says, "Only God can satisfy. Mm-hmm. Only God can satisfy." So when we place our trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we want to spend time with Him, praising Him, praying, Bible reading, mm-hmm. um, uh, spending time with other believers. Um, and even meditation. But along with that, I always point out to people that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you want to make sure that your meditation is on the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's taken from Psalm 1 verse 2. Um, So again, in in as much as we, we would like to have this time alone with God, sometimes we don't always get that. You know, being a sick baby, yeah. being an example, or suddenly children are home, or now the children can't go to school because Mm -hmm. somebody in their class tested positive with COVID. And so there's always these things that can disrupt our day. And so one of the things, and it's actually a bit of a treasure for me, uh, when we raised our family, was we always had devotions together after breakfast. Mm -hmm. And that worked out for us because that was a good time slot. But Mm -hmm. maybe it's something you can do after supper or um, right before everybody goes to bed. You know, and it doesn't take long, but it then also satisfies some of that need for moms and dads to have that opportunity to do a devotion, read their Bible, Mm -hmm. um, and the prayer time they can do um, on their own, um, you know, certainly with their family, but you're going to want to have private uh, prayer time as well. And meditation mm-hmm. time as well. Yeah. Um, you know, Mark 6.31 says, Come away by yourself to a desolate place and rest a while. And I think <laughs> it's so important that we recognize, you know, Jesus telling his disciples that sometimes, not sometimes, but we should be yep. taking time to, to just rest, rest in his presence listen for his voice, um, praise him, uh, pray, meditate on his words. Mm -hmm. Um, We need to do that physically and spiritually. Yeah. And so I do one last triangle. Okay. That I'm kind of catching you off guard with here. Yeah. But what I wanted to say was, now just imagine if we were to... um, Say, for example, that our spiritual aspect of our life wasn't important. Mm -hmm. Or let's say we didn't care anymore about finances and we were just going to throw those things away. Well, this is what our triangle might or our star then might look like. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see there's a void here. It's not complete. And we are going to feel that way as well. And that's why I think it's so important that we try as much as we can to develop all of these aspects of our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see like with the wheel too. And now I'll post a link on um, the YouTube channel uh, or the, this YouTube um, production here of uh, where I found this. But yeah, you can see that my wheel is a little bumpy. <laughs> so just like the star was not complete, you can see kind of where your wheel would need a little bit of attention as well. Yeah. I, the one thing um, I just had for spiritual, they um, they just asked questions or had statements like, I have a sense of meaning and purpose in my life. I have a general sense of serenity. And then I was just thinking about um, like the fruits of the spirit. Is that being um, something you're seeing in your life? Um, the serenity of even John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life, having that hope in, in that peace in Jesus. And um, yeah, so yeah, I, I really enjoyed this exercise. So if you want to try it at home, I will have the link so that you can do that as well. 
Um, so as we talked about all those aspects, um, so for those that are listening right now, what are um, some next steps that parents could take if they're noticing that one piece of their star is kind of flat? <laughs> mm-hmm. What could they do? Oh, well, one of the things was going along with uh, with your wheel, Annie. Mm-hmm. Um, there were the questions oh, yeah. went yes. along. Um, and so... I thought this became a very use, useful tool for parents mm-hmm. to be able to say, oh, yeah, that's the area that I need to work on, just as yep. you have explained as we've gone on. Yeah. Um, and, and then I think, you know, like anything, I, you know, I tell people, you know what, any time that we have to change our thinking, that's hard work. Mm-hmm. And any time we need to make changes in life, that's hard work, as you pointed out, you know, it creates growth in us. Yes. Uh, and so it's saying, first of all, do I do I really want to to grow in these areas? And if the answer mm-hmm. is yes, it's making those specific changes. Um, but I think there's also lots of professional help in the area, as I mentioned, mm-hmm. for finances, there's financial counseling, there's financial fitness in Windsor, which is also now known, I have to look here, Credit Canada Debt Solutions. Okay. Um, and so there's that counseling is available. Um, it's asking for help. Mm-hmm. It's um, if we have physical needs, reaching out to doctors. Uh, if we have some of those emotional or sexual needs, it's reaching out to to counselors mm-hmm. uh, or pastors. Yep. The same with spiritual needs. Um and if somebody feels that um, they're not doing well generally and they need emergency help, um, there's also hospitals in our community crisis line, mm-hmm. 519-973-4435, which is a 24-hour <laughs> day, seven-day-a-week number available nice. for people they need to call. Nice. Um, so I, I think, again, it's, you know, it's recognizing that I'm feeling this way, recognizing that I have a lack of energy and a lack of motivation. I don't Mm -hmm. like to be there. I'd like to be back up here where I was before. And so, you know, taking some of the steps that are mentioned in these statements um, and some of the things that we've already talked about in order to help ourselves kind of rejuvenate get back there. And I think I'll just reiterate what you said, like, don't wait till you are down on that ladder you're all the way on the last rung like as soon as you notice it's kind of going down reach out for help and there's so many willing people that are there to care for you and um, if someone would like to reach out to you Darlene um, how could they do that what would be the best way um, either by email or telephone. I'm okay. pretty sure that um, that information is on Deer Run's um, website. Yes. Because mm-hmm. I have had people tell me that. So, oh, good. Awesome. Yeah, so that's there. Um, yeah, that, that works. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I'm just going to close the podcast with one last question. Um, so right now, and that we are kind of in the midst of COVID still, Um, What's one thing that you are doing now that is giving you life or filling your tank? Um, Yeah, it can be anything big. It can be something small. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I'm catching you off guard a little bit. (laughs) That's okay. Um, I I think for me, and it kind of goes back to some of the study that I've done on resiliency. Mm -hmm. And um, what are those things that help people get through and um, a couple of them come to mind for me, um, and that is um, a sense of humor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and some days that's really hard. Some days it's hard to find things to laugh at, you know, just because there's all kinds of other things going on in my life as well. Yep. Um, but, you know, finding those, those, those riddles or those jokes or those funny things that we can laugh about. Um, and I think the other thing is um, that goes along with resiliency is having um, trusted relationships with other adults that we know care about us and love us. Yeah. Um, and so surrounding myself with those people. Um, so obviously my husband. And mm-hmm. then there's uh, about there's four women that pray for me regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, one in particular who I meet with specifically to share prayer requests with we meet every few weeks Um, we've done 
for years. And I think that knowing that that support is there mm-hmm. is very, um, very important to me. So, awesome. And then the last thing is walk. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of walking. Awesome. Uh, we have a treadmill in our basement. So when mm-hmm. the weather's bad, um, I, you know, try and get down there and, uh, yep. and get in. So, yeah. Nice. Thank you so much, Charlene, for willing to do this. I, I am very excited to share this with everyone. So thanks again. Well, thank you and uh, all the best to everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Dear Ryan Parents podcast, Refocus. I hope that conversation just um, blessed you and gave you some things to think about and to reassess in your own life as well to see where you're at. And um, parents, um, like I learned (laughs) in this episode, it's okay to give yourself permission to do things, to have some self-care, to invest in yourself and your hobbies as well. So I hope that was something you took away as well. Um, Yeah, know that uh, us at church, all the staff at church, we are here for you. If ever you need any kind of help or you just want to chat, don't be afraid to reach out, okay? Um, We are here for you. So I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, um, wherever you're at. And yeah, please tune in for the next one on the Dear Run Parents podcast. Bye, everyone.